need is to establish a clear and consistent standard, which is that this kind of behavior is not acceptable no matter what district you're in, no matter what state you're in. Nowhere in America is bullying and harassment something we're going to accept in our schools anymore. And as a former teacher, I can tell you, as Rafina pointed out, my colleagues want this. Two years ago, we surveyed high school and middle school teachers about the issue of safety in schools, and we offered them a number of interventions that they could choose from as ones that might make a difference. This report, conducted by the Harris Polling Organization, called From Teasing to Torment, School Climate in America, is available on the table outside. And the number one thing teachers said they needed was clear and comprehensive policies above everything else they could have, a supportive principal, training, school clubs. It was a clear and comprehensive policy that teachers said they needed as the most important intervention in order for them to do their job of making their school safe. And in fact, students who were surveyed in that study told us that those kinds of policies do make a difference. Because the students that went to schools without comprehensive policies were one-third more likely to say that bullying and harassment was a serious problem than the students that went to schools that did have comprehensive policies. So sometimes people will come back with what I find, you know, frankly an asinine response, which is, well, you can't do anything about this. The statistics show that is not true. We can do something about this, and interventions such as clear policies lead to results. And as a history teacher, I have to step back and remind people why it's important that we have clear and consistent enumeration in our laws. On the first day of second grade in the Winston-Salem for South County